Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this semi-abstract tree using an experimental approach. Um, I'm painting on a flat board today and I'm going to draw out just the rough shape of a tree and then I'm going to experiment wet in wet with Dr P H Martin's um, waterproof inks and watercolour paint. So why do I experiment so much with skies, with all sorts of things like that? Um, well, I think for me anyway, experimenting is just as important, if not more important than trying to produce a finished painting. And funnily enough, the experiments in themselves sometimes lead to a finished painting, um, but something that's unique and different and that I wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Um, if I'd been always painting in a more traditional way. Now, that being said, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with painting traditionally. If you look at um, the content here on my channel, there's quite a mixture of sort of experimental approaches and fairly traditional loose watercolour landscapes. So I think it's really important to, um, if you're in interested in loose landscape painting, to sort of combine both approaches, to combine learning all the kind of really important techniques and um, methods, um, sort of, for example, like learning how to lay a really nice flat wash or a graduated wash, um, learning how to control the water in your brushes and the wetness or dryness of your paper. All these basics are very important um, so that you can um, understand the process of watercolour painting. But then what is important too as well is sometimes to step away from the traditional approach and just play, just become a child again and play with paint, water, paper, ink, maybe pastels, um, watercolour pencils, charcoal, any kind of media really, and just imagine yourself, I don't know, back at school again, or sitting at the kitchen table, playing around with sort of finger paints or something like that, and just have that same sort of approach where you just you know, throw the paint or the ink onto the paper, spray it with a water spray, and see what happens. Tip and tilt the board, add some strange colors, uh, be really, um, creative and experimental and it's not always going to work but it's a lot of fun. I often get questions from people sort of worried about trying to find their own style of painting um, or worried about sort of trying to paint something a bit different but more often than not it seems to be that um, the beginners especially are concerned about finding their own style um, and also sort of how to paint looser so that they feel that their painting is very tight um, or their drawing is very tight and they just want to loosen up. And I mean, there are many different ways of um, creating the right sort of conditions to loosen up and to develop your own style. But I think one of the first and foremost ways, especially for beginners, is to sort of let go of that need to produce a finished painting or a finished traditional style painting every time. Sometimes it's just good to get the paints out and doodle. Just play and see what happens. See what happens if you um, run sort of two lines of wet paint into each other and then maybe spray it with a water bottle and see what then happens and you, when you tip and tilt the paint so that it runs into the patterns created by the, the water spray. Um, all sorts of things that you can do. You can, instead of um, painting out traditional swatches to test your new watercolour paints, you can paint the traditional swatches, but then introduce different colours into the swatch and more water, maybe a little bit of salt, something like that, and see what sort of patterns you get, what effects that you get, and how the colours sort of marry and mingle on the page and then take your swatches while they're still wet and maybe spray them with a water spray, tip and tilt a bit more and see what happens to the colours then. And all these sorts of experiments will just give you some ideas for future paintings. 
um, which will be more planned and which will use more traditional techniques. But you can introduce some of the results that you've discovered in your experiments into your considered and planned compositions where you've really worked hard to get your tonal values right and to get a good solid composition using the, the rule of thirds or using something like a Z-shaped composition, that sort of thing. You can then introduce a few of your more experimental approaches so that it gives your landscape something unique, something that only you have discovered through your personal experimentation. And while this approach of combining sort of traditional watercolour methods and your own personal experiments might not always work, very often you can sort of, if you keep an open mind rather than um, being too sort of upset or concerned if something goes wrong, keeping an open mind um, and looking at the painting with fresh eyes, you can see things in it, even if it wasn't a success, you can see where you almost succeeded or something almost worked beautifully. And that means you can then get some more paper out and try again, um, trying to eliminate what you didn't like from the painting and trying to accentuate the unique quality that you could see in your failed painting and then trying to enhance and work and work towards being able to bring that those sorts of elements into your work. And I'm sure that you will then really be able to really enjoy progressing and following your own unique watercolour path and begin creating some very beautiful, but more important, importantly, um, unique and wonderful landscape paintings, whether they're traditional or whether they're more experimental, whether they're abstract or whether they are figurative or very realistic, experimentation will be the thing that will help you to bring that unique quality of your own style into what you paint. So today I've been painting on Saunders Waterford 90 pound um, cold press paper and I've used, as I said before, the Dr. Dr. P. H. Martin Bombay inks, they're waterproof. I've used um, the black Indian ink, um, grass green and blue and it's given me this beautiful tree which I'm now I've let it dry completely, so I'm just going to finish it off with a watercolour wash of cerulean blue. So using my large Pro Art Harky brush, just washing the cerulean blue over the over the tree, over the whole painting, um, because it's waterproof, everything's set and won't run. Um, I've got my board at 45 degrees now. You can see the wash running down the page. And the cerulean blue has dulled the ink where I've washed completely over it. So I'm just dabbing a bit of it out. Look, you can see how much has come off from the tree. But you can also see as I dab the wash off, the ink shines through brightly again. So this was my experiment to try and get this kind of very wet in wet, very loose, very expressive tree painted in the inks. And then to see what a watercolour wash would look like over the top of it and I think the cerulean blue is a really beautiful colour for this. It's worked really well and it's very much in keeping with the richness of the inks. So here my experiment was about using ink in a different way rather than using it as I often do for line and wash. I suppose I've used the ink for the main painting and then used the wash of watercolour at the end to bring it all together. And here I've experimented with the inks with wet in wet technique, with colour blending on the page, um, with using the misting spray to create texture and volume, to um, using lots and lots of spattering, some of it left hard edged on dry paper and some of it softly blending to create these sort of lovely lost and found edges and suggestions of the tree canopy in this semi-abstract painting. Well, I hope um, my sort of uh, another one of these rambling videos has been helpful 
to you or made you think and I'm hoping that if you don't already experiment a lot that you'll think about starting and sort of just trying things out and not always trying to produce a finished painting but sometimes just seeing what happens if you just doodle on the page and then just splash some paint around with no expectations except to see what happens and to just play with paint a little bit like we did when we were kids. There's a two-part um, in-depth tutorial for this on Patreon where I explain my methods in more detail and the thought processes behind them. So if you're interested in that and plenty more Patreon exclusive tutorials, videos and tips and tricks, please follow the link below. Thank you so much for watching um, and thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.